Hi, today's review is about the MFJ226, which is a graphical antenna analyzer. But before we start with the review, we will go to the unboxing to see what's in the box when you receive that unit. So we'll do a quick unboxing, then we'll go through the specs, then we'll finish with a conclusion. So this is the unit, so after you connected the antenna, as it come with a type N adapter to SO239, so you connect your antenna on it. And if you look at the unit, you have the battery in the back, but in the front you have a keypad. And this keypad has a few functions, it's pretty easy to understand, you can use this without even reading the manual, okay? So if you look at the keyboard here, you have the power button, you have the arrow button here up down, it's to scroll into the screen and in the menu. This is the enter button, this is the back button, let you go back to the previous menu. This is the config button that you use to uh, change uh, frequency range and uh, things like that. Also, it's used as a dot when you enter a frequency directly by the digit over there. So let's turn on the unit. So when you turn it on, hold on, I'm just make sure I'm focusing. Yes, on the screen. When you turn on the unit, uh, you arrive into that menu. The first menu, the single frequency, let you see the standing wave ratio uh, directly at the frequency you want. So right now I'm connected to my 80 meter, 40 meter dipole. So what I'll go, I'll do, I will enter directly the frequency dot 3765, that should be enter. And you can see that my standing wave is very good over there. If I switch my antenna, let's see how fast it is. On my 10, 20, 10, 15, 20 meter Yagi, as you can see, it's very fast, okay? The SWR change, so it's quite live information. That is pretty good, so you don't have to sweep every time. You see, I'm back on the dipole. So now let's go, I know that it also has uh, low standing wave on 40 meter because it's a dual band dipole if you want so I will enter my frequency there you go so you see that I'm pretty low over there now it is configured uh, in a 10 kilohertz step okay so that's easier you can configure it to one hertz <laughs> up to uh, up to uh, one meg so but I find that 10 kilohertz is pretty good, okay? Oh, by the way, if you see some dot on the screen, okay, this is not high resolution screen, okay? It's not a TV. And my 4K camera give me 
a lot of resolution actually the unit is bigger on the screen that it can be uh, in real life so that's why you see all the pixel it just amplifies uh, when you are looking at a 4k screen or uh, a larger screen okay so as you can see you can switch or you can leave your finger on it and you see how fast it is to change the frequency okay so this is the single frequency mode now let's go into the sweep frequency plot that means it's going to show you a visual graphic you can have swr impedance resistance reactance return loss phase angle smith chart okay so that's pretty complete and let's go for swr by default okay by default it is from 1 megahertz to 230 megahertz but i did configure the start frequency so if i want to change the start frequency i just you see enter oops hold on let me that's it 13.5 let's say press enter then you have to push the config button again and enter the stop frequency it's already 14.5 scale you can calibrate but you don't touch that you can save the result of your graph okay but just by putting a number you have up to 32 memory and you save it and you can recall it uh, into a pc after so that's how you save it so that's pretty easy okay so you see now that i swept at 14 between 13.5 okay if i go like this scroll down 13.5 to 14.5 okay so you see the swr below doesn't work well because i'm on the dipole let's go on the b now so you see now it changed my beam is a little bit low in frequency so but you see that in the bottom of the band that it is very good okay and if you want to check the impedance this should match the SWR same at 50 ohm you should have your frequency where, where you have the lowest cell to SWR sorry I just I move with the <laughs> device so if I got I go at the bottom of the band I should be oh, well you see okay I'm too low you see here I should yeah 50 okay so that's where I get the better result reactants return loss will be similar where you have okay so you see you have less return loss where the antenna has the lowest SWR as well phase angle you also have the Smith chart okay I go fast on this this is for more advanced user so but people that are doing or testing antenna this is a very good unit for that but if you are like me doing review installing and change antenna and you want to tune it it is very very good I had a, an old tuner that I use uh, and a laser sorry that I use and it was not that fast so we need to sweep and you know it worked but it's it's not as good as this one okay this is the probably the best one I, I ever saw or add myself you go in the setting here you have the setting menu the backlight always you push enter you scroll with this go back like this auto power off battery you can have alkaline and NIMH battery this does not charge a battery but you can use rechargeable battery into it uh, the step size the step size I'm in 10 kilohertz but you have 100 kilohertz 1 megahertz and you can go down up down to 1 Hertz LCD contrast okay you have the calibration data okay uh, they say don't play with the calibration if you don't have the right tools so it's already calibrated when you get the unit so if you're not an advanced user please don't do any calibration the info you have the model with the firmware version with the battery uh, life and this is uh, the last menu setting where you plug a PC you just put yourself in PC mode you install the software and it should detect the MFJ226 that's about it for the menu so and then we'll go through the PC software to show you what it does 
For the software, just go on the MFJ website and you can download the drivers for the COM port, the software, the PCOs, and the firmware update. When I first uh, started to make, uh, to connect the uh, MFG226 to the PC, I had some issue and I was not able to, to retrieve any data. So I contact MFG support and they told me if you have an international PC, a Windows version, and you have the comma as the decimal symbol, well, you need to change it to a dot. So that's what I did. And after that, it worked very well. After you set up the MFG226 in PC mode, you just open the software and it should detect the device right away. If you push start, it will start communicating with the device. Okay, so first, the frequency is from 1 to 230 megahertz. So what I'm going to do, I'm on my 80 meter, 40 meter dipole. So what I will do, you do push start again, and then you will have the graph. Okay, so you see that my lowest frequency where I got the best SWR is around 3.784. So that's about it. Okay, so that's about, yeah, so that is good. And I'm gonna switch my antenna to my 10, 20, 10, 15, 20 meter Yagi. And you'll see right away, because it's still running, you see right away the change, so it's sweeping. And then you will see that the standing wave is not <laughs> very good for this frequency. So I'll be back on the dipole. Okay, so as you can see, this is live, uh, like if you were using the NL, okay, directly. You also have the information, the impedance, the resistance. Uh, you see, if you want to look at where you have the 50 ohm, it should be at the frequency where you have the lowest SWR. Hold on, it's still working. Okay. So you see that is, well, it should be around there. Okay. So let's give you an idea resistance reactance return loss okay this should be uh, the lowest point at the lowest SWR as well phase angle come back here you also have the Smith chart okay in the back then the back in the second tab here sorry and you can save that you save that to a file and you can reload it anytime after and you can also load it from the unit because you can save up to 32 memory into the unit and you can load it from air and save it as well after that if you don't have access to the antenna so this for for any serious antenna experimenter this unit give you all the option you need so this is very good so let's check out now my cobweb antenna okay which covers from 10 to 20 meter all the amband. So let's do 14 to 30 megahertz. Okay, let's do a start. Okay, I'm on the 80 meter, 40 meter dipole. Let's go on the cobweb. Give it a moment. There you go. So I can see the band 20 meter, 17 meter, 15 meter. Oops. Okay. All right. There you go. Uh, 20 meter, 17 meter, 15, 12, and 10. Okay. So this is good because you already, you, you can see very quickly the result of your antenna and whereas the lowest SWR you have all the other information make you understand what's going on so uh, this is very very good you can have the unit in kilohertz like this megahertz when it's refreshing it's flashing green here in the refresh green and that's about it you can even print the graph after so uh, this is very very cool so this concludes this video I hope you did enjoy as usual, please share, do a like, and please subscribe. Uh, your support is very much appreciated. And if you have any comments or questions, don't hesitate to go into the comments below 
or just write me an email at info at va2pv.com. I hope you did enjoy this review and I would like to wish you my best 73s.